And joining us on the line right now is Bill Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard. Also a spitfire, by the way. Yeah, he is. And one, and one hears. Uh, listen, uh, yesterday the big news was John Kasich getting out of the race. Here we go. And as I suspend my campaign today, I have renewed faith, deeper faith, that the Lord will show me the way forward. And so he's out, and that leaves only Donald Trump as the presumptive nominee. Bill Crystal, you haven't been excited about the idea of Donald Trump as the presumptive nominee, so I'm sort of wondering, now that he is all but certain to become the Republican nominee, how do you feel about things? I feel like we should do better than Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I, I, I'm, I think the Lord could would reward us if we tried hard to find a better president for the country than one of those two people. And so that's what I'm trying to do. And I very much agree with Ben Sass last night, who went on a tweet storm and did an excellent Facebook, wrote an excellent Facebook post about how the country deserves better than Clinton or Trump. So are you saying that we need a third-party candidacy? Uh, that would be great if we were the right candidate. And I think there are many, many, many people who would be better than uh, Clinton and Trump. Some of them are more moderate than I am, and into moderate independents like General Mattis. Uh, I had some conversations with him, and he decided not to pursue it. Or Ben Sass, a good conservative, young conservative senator. Uh, Tom Coburn, a recently retired uh, conservative senator, both men of integrity and uh, real ideas. Uh, whereas we have uh, Clinton and Trump, really, Clinton's a retread, obviously. And Trump, for all the, you know, excitement and the dynamism, is a uh, an old businessman who's worked the system and isn't going to change anything. So are you actively working with other people around town to try to uh, recruit or enlist somebody to run a third-party campaign? And are you also working with any uh, potential uh, campaign fundraising-type organizations or people who could actually fund a third-party campaign? I'm trying to. I mean, working is a little bit, uh, maybe it's, well, working is, I guess, the term you could use. On the phone, email, does that count as work? I don't know. Taking a break here to do radio, it's, you know, probably, God knows, I'm missing some important donors right now on, on line one by, by talking to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, no, I'm trying to do my best. I mean, I don't have some organizational infrastructure, though I'd say more people are interested, more serious people that are interested that, that I think conventional wisdom realizes. And I think the money would be there, the lawyers uh -huh. get to do the ballot access would be there, the operators would be there. I mean, it, it could be put together pretty quickly. Uh, can I ask you something? The, the names you just floated out there, uh, freshman senator from Nebraska, conservative Republican, uh, former Marine general, uh, conservative. I don't know what his party affiliation is, but I've heard him speak. He's definitely a conservative. Um, and I'm guessing you're, you're thinking about other potential candidates along that line. What percentage of Hillary Clinton's base or Bernie Sanders base would uh, leave the Democratic Party and vote for your third party candidate? You know, I think some, for some more than others, I think someone like General Mattis would have had real uh, appeal. I think even a more conservative Republican, depending on the kind of campaign he ran, might be able to persuade some people who disagree with him on some issues that uh, they should prefer him or her to Hillary Clinton, who's going to be their nominee. Uh, it'd probably take more votes from Republicans and probably end up I would hope to supplanting Trump and becoming the de facto alternative to Clinton, and I would hope beating Clinton. I don't think Trump has much chance to beat Clinton. I think this independent candidate would have just as good a chance. All right, but what, what do you say to those who say, Crystal, it's sour grapes. Okay, your guy didn't win. The process was fair. Everybody had a shot at it. There were 17 candidates, for goodness sake, and they couldn't beat Donald Trump. So, you know, just, you know, get on board. Yeah, look, that's fair if it were the NCAA tournament or, you know, the, the World Series. I mean, that's uh, if it were no more important than who's this year's champion, I would, of course, go along with the results. But it's about the next president of the United States. Uh, we do have a system that permits independent candidacies. Some pretty impressive people have run in the past as third or fourth party candidates. The system is, is not friendly to that, and it shouldn't be, because having a two-party system is a good thing 95%, 98% of the time. But this is the other 2%, I think. When Pat Buchanan ran... Uh, as a, a independent candidate, I don't remember you being very uh, bullish. And well, I don't and think that Buchanan. I didn't like that Buchanan's platform, but I didn't begrudge him the right to do so. And same with Ross Perot, who really did us damage in '92 when I was in that first push White House. But I think you could argue Perot raised some issues to the country that needed to be raised. And again, it's, this is a system that we have, and uh, people are entitled. They're entitled to run, and I, I don't look. I don't do this lightly, you know. I voted for the Republican candidate every election of my adult lifetime. I think I counted it up yesterday. Maybe it's eleven times in a row. So 
I haven't gone around looking for them. Some people have worked for Pro, worked for Buchanan, worked for John Anderson. They're kind of into independent candidacies. That's not me. You know, yeah. I've, I've been a pretty loyal Republican. I just can't stomach Trump. Can you identify one policy that Donald Trump has proposed that you believe is is you know pushing you to the yeah. edge where you can't vote for him? It's more. I could, but I mean, it's more. I could identify a lot of policies I don't like, but it's much more character than policy. I just think Donald Trump is temperamentally unsuited and is by character unfit to be president of the United States. I mean, that for me is the fundamental thing. If I disagreed with him on foreign policy or on entitlement reform or all kinds of things, I, you know, you could probably live with that at the end. I just think Trump has shown over and over that he is a childish bully at the, without any fundamental. Uh, checks on his temperament that would give me any confidence as to how he would behave in the Oval Office. And so what has been the reaction uh, by people when they find out what you're doing? And next, as you would expect, universal approbation. That's for the, that's for the reaction. <laughs> well, all, I, just, I can't even walk down the street without people coming up to me and patting me on the back. No, oh, many people, uh, if people get in touch with me, tend to agree with me a little more if I don't hear from all the people who very much dislike it. A lot of people say, oh, come on, it's not practical. I think that's, that's for me the interesting thing. I mean, if, we, if it got going and was practical, I think the question is how many people who are now kind of saying, okay, I guess we've got to go with Trump and say, wait a second, we have a real choice. For now, there doesn't seem to be a choice, so there's a little bit of a accommodation to Trump. I think a little more than there would be if, if the choice becomes evident. But honestly, the reaction's been mixed, but I'd say I'm surprised at how many serious people would like it who don't, again, traffic in normally in third-party candidacies and in kind of the utopian efforts. How many people are interested in at least exploring this seriously? We learned today that uh, George Herbert Walker Bush and George W. Bush, both presidents 41 and 43 respectively, will not be endorsing Donald Trump. And they're going to sit this one out. Uh, for, for George Bush the elder, this is the first time in literally in decades that he will not be endorsing or being a part of a convention for the Republican Party. Now, you, of course, have close ties to the Bush administration. And I wonder, or the, the previous Bush administrations, I should say. Uh, have you had any conversations with Jeb Bush or uh, with the Bush family about this plan of yours? No, no. I mean, I, I don't know any more than you do, but I, I think it's indicative. These are people who have obviously supported all kinds of Republicans once they lost to in different races, what, you know, when, once they disagreed with. I uh, Mitt Romney is not going to support, I believe, is not going to support uh, Trump either. That's got to tell you something. You may not be a Bush Republican or a Romney Republican, but the fact that they can't even support him, that, that, that's how you say, I'm going to see Romney tonight, actually, at this dinner uh, in honor of uh, Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm on the program, and, and, and Romney is more prominently as he should be on the program. So we'll have a are you, to talk to Mitt. Maybe, maybe Mitt will do it. Yeah, are you going to pitch him? He could self fund it. Or what about, have, have, will you pitch Jeb Bush? Would, would Jeb Bush or Mitt Romney be an ideal independent candidate? No, no, it's too established. But it's, and I think someone who lost to Trump this time would look more like sour grapes. I would prefer either. I, I'm not, I was not a Jeb Bush supporter, as you know, this time. And I had, was very pretty critical of Romney. I'm looking forward to seeing him tonight to see how, how much he's, you know, right. that in the past. But, <laughs> but I mean, either would be a better president than Trump. And, and the main thing is they could, their support could obviously help someone else, sure. especially Mitt Romney with his fundraising network. Bill Crystal, keep us in the loop on this one. Yep. You know, when, when you hear more information, let, let us know because we definitely want to keep this conversation going. All right. Listen, uh, happy, happy Bill Crystal, we Weekly Standard, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Always a pleasure. Right. And political upstart, political radical. He's a, breaking the two-party system single-handedly. He's become a bomb thrower. That's he what is. he's become, that Bill Crystal.